There's that one. Double double five would be absolutely fine. Oh, uh, isn't that six. remarkable it's that the person who doesn't need it? it so I thought if he was an ace, Lilov yeah. has a breath of hope. Must only, be an only ace 1 here. Percent here. Okay, 5 4 that ends the match. Fine and Grimoy sends it into a deciding tie. And we are going to see a nine point shootout between the two teams. Welcome back to the Nations Cup. We're about to feature the shootout between Denmark and the Ukraine. Denmark has won the second match and it's one all going into the decider. Joining his teammate Xander Lilov is Peter Jez Thompson, a world-renowned player having won at least two major international titles, including a world title at 21. He's arguably the backbone of the Danish team. Joining Yuri Krivoy is Leonid Riskin, a noted big money player. He's frequently seen on the international tournament circuit. Now let's rejoin the action with John in the commentary box. Game number five in the semi-final shootout between uh, the Ukraine and Denmark. Uh, for the Ukraine, we have Yuri Krivoy, who we've already seen, and Leonard Riskin, um, a football trainer, but a well-known big money backgammon player. For Denmark, we have uh, Sander Lilov, who we've already seen, and Peter Jess Thompson, a former world champion. Yeah, I mean, no, not many people are world champion age, just 21 years of age, which Thompson was in 1993. Yeah, the youngest um, world champion there has ever been, Will. Is that so? Well, um, and here he is, 13 years later, still at it and still right in one of the giants of the game. Yeah, and for all it's worth, Will, I know both of these Danish players, since I've had the pleasure of losing to both of them <laughs> in major international tournaments. I lost to Peter Jez in the uh, quarterfinals of the Nordic Open in 2000, the year that he went on to win it. Okay. And I lost to Sander Lulov in the first round in Monte Carlo, the World Championships, uh, last year, as a matter of fact, at double match points. Okay, well, you only ever lose to Giants. That's very impressive, John. <laughs> Thank you, Will. But anyway, to the action, and we've got uh, a nine-point match here with the Danes leading 3-1. Very bashful cube action. We've uh, in that um, we're into game five, and we've yet to see a cube accepted. We've had four passes in a row. I wonder if we'll get um, a cube taken in this game. Well, let's uh, let's look at it now. Will who's favourite here? Well, I was about to say it's an even game, and it's not. It's 51 to 49 percent. Well, that's in backgammon parlance. That is an even game, Will. And uh, it's a, it's a coin flip game for me. This one. Um, now then we have um it's a battle of the anchors at the moment and it's just um small advantage to have the anchor on the bar point yeah. which um the ukrainians have and the danes are just hanging back on that four point that double six has has given the ukrainians quite a considerable pip lead uh, which may or may not be an advantage in this situation because it's all about timing and who leaves that first that's um right. first shot that's right he's got a fair amount of spare play at the moment with those yellow checkers on the seven and eight point the danes are very stripped aren't they look at that they haven't got a really kind of a spare man on any of those outside anchors which means that one of them's going to have to go very soon i can't believe he's volunteering a shot here i think he'll probably schmunch his board um, or he'll clear the seven point on this occasion, I don't mind the, uh, mm -hmm. the schmunching play, <laughs> keeping the four prime in front of him. But they've chosen to clear the seven point. Three, one. Well, well, I don't think um, the Danes are going to be waking an anchor here, are they? Well, well they could. They could wake the, break the nine, think yes. a good six. They can leave the bot there. There's a, a sort of human shield yeah, play. Uh, since yeah. Yellow has two blots on his home board, they choose not to. Valid comment from Sander Lilov there, suggesting that he might keep a, a, a good six by leaving that red checker on the nine point. Double one, this doesn't do Super much. Quite. Well, host always to play this. Is he going to cover his three? Is he going to bring two checkers down from 
the midpoint to the other midpoint. Of course, every time a double is rolled, because it has to be played four times, uh, there are inevitably that many more choices on how to play mm. it. That's I mean, if he, if he covers a three here, what does he do with that fourth ace? That's, that's the problem, play. isn't it? I don't think he's going to make that play. The shift of five to four. There are probably really uh, 20 yeah. candidate right. plays here. <laughs> <laughs> So they've, um, they've, they've, I, they've tried out, they've rehearsed the board, so pretty much everything that we've pointed think, out. That works for me. I think cool. this is my favorite nice play. play. That works for me is what we hear over the board. Doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> they, because they are behind in the race, they want to keep the, the, the maximum standoff um, possible. Of course, they could have moved those two red checkers uh, from yellow 12 to red 12. It's a tricky play as well, isn't it, John? That, that, that anchor there on the 8 is valuable, and instead he's just burning a man to the ace. Well, unfortunately, I don't speak Russian, Will, so I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Uh, these players are getting tricky and tricky. Who's going to leave the first blot? 6 4, he just makes the two point. One of the numbers that he preserved as good with the previous play uh, with the double one. Ooh, and this is a shot. The, the six this is forced. Is, uh, clunker. And he'll be looking for a three. Preferably with a five. He will hit this with any three, despite the blot in his home board. A five two, he'll Pretty just consolidate. Strengthen his home board and hope to get another shot fairly soon. That will just go past the anchor. Now he can run off the anchor and take control of the outfield. Now then, what's he going to exactly do with what both of them or just one? He will take both out, volunteering no direct shot. Yeah, this is only seven shots. <laughs> Five, six. Uh, the other way is double ace and double deuce. Yeah, maybe. Double deuce is a good shot anyway. So is double ace, is kind of. Killing a guy though. But making it more difficult, we get. He has to do stuff with 5 2, with. Five yeah, two is the only five, one. 5 4. Oh, 5 4, he's doing the same anyway. Yeah, but, we'll, but we like want to be there, but we don't want to give up this guy. A classic but bit of Danish like analysis here. Sure it's not like we need that guy Indeed, that. it's all about whether so to like? creep up from 4 to 7 yeah, with that back uh, man or semi burner man which would make it difficult to uh, make we that five point which they'd like to do if they hit a shot John. But, but since the cube is in the middle uh, will they may like never one. have to make that five Here? point to yeah. win mm -hmm. the game oh, me too. they have access five, to the cube aha uh -huh, so they have um semi burnt or well completely burnt him okay a horrible shot for yellow he has to expose two checkers no choice whatsoever as to what to do with the play and here comes the cue from the Danes well I'd be scared to take this fives and sixes hit plus other combination numbers it's about 27 28 numbers out of 36 I personally would run a mile at this cube John well this is not clear to me either will um, it's certainly takeable because the, the Ukrainians are 30 pips ahead on the race and should Denmark happen to miss all of these shots and yes there are a lot of them uh, then Ukraine would probably be whipping back a four cube um, again depending on the number that red missed with well quite clearly the two Ukrainians are arguing about this um, the feeling is that Krivoy wants to take this and Riskin wants to pass this. Not clear to me at all. Um, I'm erring on the side of take, Will, because uh, they're behind on the score mm. and the five point is open. And if they did manage to turn the game with a beautiful five, double five, something like that, entering, um, they would then be able to push it back to four and have a healthy lead in the match five three yeah, absolutely a lot of things can happen here it's uh, against a closed board i think i would have to go for a pass here but with the five point open uh, i think i'm going to uh, very slightly on the side of a take but this make no mistake this is a very strong cube 
And that's why they're arguing about it. <laughs> You're a braver man than me. But, um, well, I haven't counted the shots yet. But is there a gammon threat here, John? There, there is, although it's a slight illusion because uh, even to get to 40% gammons, Red has to hit both checkers, close them out, and then it's about 40% gammons. So at this stage, when he hasn't even hit either checkers, the gammon threat is probably only about 20%. Mm -hmm. 